Good evening and welcome back to Capitol Tonight, a statewide look at politics. I'm Tim Boy. Monday, the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs announced major changes and a restructuring. This comes after months of controversy about wait times and health care issues at veterans' hospitals and facilities all across the country. On this Veterans Day, we continue that conversation. Joining us from Charlotte, retired Colonel Paul Pissarro from Concerned Veterans for America. The group has a task force that plans to propose legislation to the next Congress. Colonel Pissarro, welcome to the program, sir. Good to see you, sir. Thank you. Well, thank you for having me. Absolutely. I, first of all, just tell us a little bit about the, the organization first. Well, Concerned Veterans for America, is, uh, as you probably will be aware, has been an organization that's been in place for about two and a half years, and its focus is not necessarily as other veteran service organizations, but our focus is mainly to preserve those freedoms and liberties that many of our veterans fought and died for. We want to make sure that we're not only a veteran organization, but we're an American organization fighting for American values. We saw the issues uh, across the country, including some, uh, you know, frankly bad reports about uh, Fayetteville and Durham as well. You, you saw the announcement yesterday. Uh, first, before we get into some of those, so what's your take on what we what we learned yesterday? You know, it, it's uh, we have a state that has 800,000 veterans. We have some major military installations, and a lot of our a lot of people like to stay here in North Carolina, and so we should be focusing on taking care of those veterans, not only for, for them, but for the economy, because they bring a lot into the economy. So when health care is not given, you know, uh, a, a, not given its emphasis, especially for the veterans, because of whatever reason, that, that's something that I think they deserve a little bit better. So the, the, uh, the Secretary of Veterans Affairs said he, he's going to hire a chief customer service officer, he's going to focus on customer service and easier access. Uh, the my VA I mean, are those all good indicators you think that that there's do you have confidence I guess that this is turning around well uh, in my opinion uh, I don't think so and the reason I say that is it's great that he wants to do these things but that's another layer of bureaucracy just added into the customer service arena and and really customer service is something that we, we really need they need but just adding a person as a customer service representative is not going to do it if if the whole if the whole uh, emphasis is on customer service, then we really need to look at those people who are still left in the VA who created a scandal. We need to make sure they're not part of uh, creating a, a better VA because I don't see how they can do it if they created a scandal. All right, so you guys are um, convening a Fixing Veterans Health Care Policy Task Force. Uh, tell us a little bit about that and the role that you hope to play in it as well. Well, the, the, the task force is, uh, uh, Bill Friss is part of it, and he's a, you know, he's a, very well, very well respected uh, uh, political advocate as well as a, a doctor. And this is, is fixing health care is something that Concerned Veterans for America wanted to pursue for a while now. And what we're doing is we're just making sure that the voices of both veterans and VA employees are heard. And that's something that we think is important. You need to hear from both sides. Right now, within the VA, they want to do the same thing, but they're only looking for input from the VA employees. And again, we need to get outside influence and or outside ideas to help fix it is from the veterans specifically what do you hope congress can do as we get into the next session uh... in the years ahead i mean is do you believe that's where we can see the most action congress is important because just recently you know uh... they championed the va uh, accountability and choice act and that's important uh, but within the va itself you know we need to if they're going to be be for accountability. The first thing they want to do is be accountable. Second thing they need to do is uh, offer incentives uh, for for improved customer service. And the third thing, which is so important, is is uh, competition. And if you think about the VA and the healthcare, they don't have any of those attributes. And without those attributes, I don't see how it could be a success. So Congress definitely has to stay involved to make sure that the VA, you know, pursues uh, the right goals. Why do you think we're, we're in this situation that we are? I think it's because we lost focus. You know, when VA was established, uh, basically in the days of Lincoln, it was really to it was to preserve a, a sacred trust for the veterans, their their spouses, and and their orphans and the children. Uh, but once you become a bureaucracy of three hundred thousand plus people, and and the focus was lost, the focus of the veteran was lost in times of peace. That, that sort of got exacerbated. Now that we're back into a, a wartime environment for the last 12 to, uh, to 15 years uh, and seeing all of our soldiers and service members come out needing the VA, 
that focus needs to get back on track. And so I think it's just natural with a, a huge bureaucracy that's looking out for promotions and for th their own bonuses to lose focus of, of uh, veterans, and, and, and that's a travesty. You know, there's a lot to compete with for anybody these days with the, uh, the, the mass media and devices and technology, and there's so many options out there. What is your message for, for, for all of us, uh, for veterans, not only on Veterans Day, but, but every day for the veterans in this country? I think if, if we think about just our, ourselves, anytime we go to a new job or a new, or a new location or move, there's always that feeling of anxiety or butterflies. And think of the veterans who are sometimes uh, younger veterans or older veterans who have spent all this time training in, a, in the military. And then they, they come out of the service and now they have to reassimilate into civilian life and, and get a job and, and move. So that in itself is a huge anxiety. So we really want that to be not exacerbated by the fact that the VA health care, which they deserve, is not performing. And so what do you think the state can do? Is North Carolina doing the best it can to, to not only, you know, ask these families to stay in North Carolina after they re retire or are, are discharged from the service, or is there more that the state can do? I think the state of North Carolina is, is doing as much as it can. Uh, just today, just, just going to UNC Charlotte and seeing the, uh, the outpouring of respect for veterans from a civilian organization, uh, I think North Carolina is, is, is doing well. Uh, there's more that can be done legislatively uh, to make sure that uh, when people come out of the service that they're able to get jobs uh, here in North Carolina because they have the experience in the military. Sometimes it doesn't translate because of certifications and certificates that aren't in place uh, to give them that, uh, that leg up. So North Carolina is, doing, is examining that, and I think the state VA director is examining that, so, but it still needs to be pursued, and uh, the legislation here in North Carolina needs to pursue as well. Do you believe that, that we, we're on the right track, though, with these health care issues? I mean, we mentioned it off camera. Sometimes it takes, unfortunately, deaths for these things to come to the spotlight and the limelight. Uh, but do you think that, that we're going to turn this around and that we have the capability of doing that? I think uh, the secretary is, is needs to walk the walk uh, more. Um, he is a veteran. Uh, he, he understands the situation. I think the, what's happening right now, though, is you have just one, one senior executive that's been fired. Uh, others have been put on administrative leave. The whole VA uh, scandal came to the attention of the American public uh, in Phoenix, Arizona, with the 40 deaths and the waiting list. That administrator, Sharon Hellman, is still on administ administrative leave after almost uh, six and a half months. And, and the VA is the only uh, place that I know of that uh, you, you can't be fired. If she had worked in a, in a civilian uh, hospital or a private sector hospital, she would have at best been sued, at worst been in jail, but here she's on a six and a half month paid vacation. Colonel Passaro, uh, we are out of time, but thank you so much for, for your service to our country and obviously your service out of this 